Trail back to the fence, and that's gone. There it is. Ace to win the set. It's caught. 20, 10, touchdown. This is going to be in the gap. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Goal down to the Blitzer. The yes. Yes. Huskies win their first state championship. From the Anoka Fieldhouse, it's a big volleyball matchup tonight on QCTV. It's a rivalry matchup. The Andover Huskies are taking on the Anoka Tornadoes as the Tornadoes try to beat Andover for the first time since 2018. Along with Tim Anderson, I'm Jim Erickson. Should be a good match here tonight. Anoka's had a heck of a season at 10-1. and Meanwhile, Andover is trying to get things going. They've won just two of their last 10 matches. But you know, Coach Hubert, he's got a plan tonight here against the old rivals, the Anoka Tornadoes. Sometimes you've got to throw the records out, right? When these two teams get together, it's a pretty fierce rivalry. And it's something that I think is a big hurdle for this Anoka team. They have circled this game on the calendar, I think, for a, a few weeks, maybe since the beginning of the season. And 10-1 and one is great. You love that record. You love the way you've played this year if you're Anoka. But beating Andover is a big deal tonight, and they have definitely put their eggs in this basket. This is a big confidence lifter. The girls want this game tonight. I think it's going to be an interesting one to watch. Anoka swept right through the Hastings tournament last Saturday, not losing a set in wins over Orono, St. Croix, Lutheran, Richfield, and Hastings. Talking to Anoka head coach Chris Fenwick in his 11th season, he said that uh, some of the better teams dropped out of that tournament, but still it was uh, good to get four matches in on Saturday to up that record to 10-1. and one. And meanwhile, Andover, they were at the Farmington tournament, played five matches and went to and three and hey we look at the schedule tim already this is the last week in september and we just have blown past the midway mark of the volleyball season yeah, this, here already this season's flying by i was chatting with some soccer players earlier today and they're like man we got four games left till playoffs where is this fall gone and uh, that's just been the nature of it this year we haven't had a lot of cancellations been a lot of great weather obviously and indoors volleyball not a big deal and uh everything's been working perfectly so far for for our schedule, and yeah, season's going very quickly. Andover is a team tonight, I would say, when we look at this team, this is a big confidence booster for them. They need to get off to a good start tonight, Jim. I think that would do a lot for their confidence. As you mentioned, only two of their last 10. Need to get out and, and play well here in set number one. Don't fall behind early. Try not to get into a big service match where you're just on trading unforced errors back and forth. Get yourself a couple of long service games, get some confidence built up, and this could be a really fun one to watch. Huskies 6-10. and ten. They are 2-1 and one in the A division of the Northwest Suburban Conference. They'll start this way under head coach Connie Huberty in her 22nd year. As a head coach of the Huskies, Morgan Miller will start in the middle on the outside. Allie Denicky in the middle. Isabella Moses on the middle hit. Sometimes on the opposite side, Madeline Swanson. Uh, Danica Lenz is an outside hitter. And their setter is Grace uh, Landry. Their libero is Addie Vocati. Meanwhile, Anoka, the head coach Chris Fenwick starting uh, Hayden Reeder, the sophomore, strong up front. Their libero is a senior alley. Tanner, Abby Leaf in the middle, Carmen Schimmick, Logan Brent, Ella Leaf, and Maddie Gibson. And again, Allie Tanner is their libero. And the thing about Anoka here this season, they've had a good mix of youth and a good mix of senior leadership with two sophomores in that starting lineup and the rest are seniors and their captains, all four of their captains start. Yeah, they love uh, they love what they have, obviously, with Reeder and Ella Leaf, and it's a bright future with those. But, yeah, you're right. The seniors have really stepped forward. Logan Brent has been phenomenal to watch up front this year. Abby Leaf has had a terrific year. They're getting great service games and uh, great defensive work out of Carmen Schimmick. They're getting what they need, both from veterans and from young players. Uh, the big key for Andover, or for Anoka, I should say, is is there a second gear? They love to pound it at the net, right? They love to get up and above the net. They love to hit it. They love to spike it. Can they do it with finesse tonight? Can they find some changes of pace and see if they can get Andover off balance? I think that's the next piece of, of Anoka as we continue to watch their maturation. Andover will be in the white unis and in the court to your right on your screen here on QCTV. And the Anoka Tornadoes in the dark black uniforms, and they are in the court to our left. And Anoka will be serving. They'll start this out here with Carmen Schimmick, who I think in uh, one or two of the matches we've seen here this season 
that we broadcast. She has had some long service runs, and she'll try and start Anoka here in this one tonight. Left to right service to the back row, and we're underway. Anoka with a five-match winning streak against, or excuse me, and over a five-match winning streak here against Anoka. Shimmick. Up high, set up there by Tanner to the left side of the back row. Dug out, Vokati, but Andover can't get it. First point of the match goes to the Tornadoes. They serve at the back line as they win at Madeline Swanson right away to get started. And they did a nice job that time of staying, you know, balanced, not diving after balls early on. That's one thing you're going to keep an eye on for Anoka. Who gives up on plays first, and if they stay in the play long enough to help out each other. Shimmick to the bad row, passed ahead by Swanson here on the near side. Lens over, and it's hit the antenna. That is out of bounds, 2 nothing. Tornadoes. Great start for the Tornadoes. Good chance for Shimmick on serve to get a nice service rally going. They already got two quick ones. Senior Shimmick, captain, back row. Might have been close to going out. Swanson played it ahead, pass it. Landry at the net up over free ball. This one's going to be too far and hammered down by Miller. Cleans up the garbage up over the net. And the ball that was up for grabs pounds at home. First point for Andover. Reader thinks maybe she slipped there a little bit. And that's why she's quickly going to go try to wipe that up wherever that condensation was on the floor. It's not the, not the world's greatest gym surface here at Anoka. We will say that. But... Uh, it's also that Reeder didn't look real comfortable on the back line on that one as well. That set wasn't uh, the most polished, and you can tell maybe a little bit uh, out of her element back there. Not overly warm in the gymnasium in the field house tonight, but there is some mugginess. You can sense some uh, moisture in the air as the service here by Landry is a net serve. 3-1 and Oka on the side out. Well, there was also 77 inches of rain out there over the last couple of days as well. People dragging that in here. Uh-huh. Now serving Logan Brent. Back row pass, Swanson to the net, Landry. Back to Swanson over free ball. There's Tanner, Shimmick, sets. Here comes Hayden Reeder. And that also hit the antenna. And they'll call that out of bounds. And over the point side out, their serve coming up. And that's at least where Reeder's comfortable, though. They've set her exactly where she wanted to. That time maybe got a little deep, got into the antenna. And he... Kind of an unforced error from the Tornadoes puts the Huskies on serve here in set number one. Claire Van Geem comes in to serve, and Anoka fails to get that over the net. To the net was Ella Leaf. Came up short, 3-3 tie. Ella missed time the jump that time. Van Geem to serve again. That is a net serve. 4-3, Anoka side out. Claire Van Diem, a, soft, a senior, 5'7", get into the net that time. Two service errors for the Tornadoes. Now Allie Tanner on serve from the libero position. Going to serve way back on the line. Going to jump serve. Here she comes. Drives it to the back row. A little collision there. Vokati push ahead Van Diem. Free ball over Swanson. Tornadoes a chance to set up. Shimmick, quick set in the middle. Tipped over, but not over. Comes back at the Tornadoes, four hits, point and over, and a little back to back and forth here in this first uh, set. Another missed time jump for Minoka at the net. That time it's Madison Hunter. She was going to go try to swat it down, but jumped maybe a split second too early and was on the way down before the ball got to her. Jump serve right to left here for the Huskies. McIntyre, Shimmick, and that one was a missed set. Wasn't sure who that was for. Great dig uh, by Shimmick on the Anoka side, then shot over there on two. Back to Anoka. Shimmick for Hayden Reeder. Blocked. Big block on the right side, led by Moses. Yeah, Isabella Moses can match up with anybody at the net, and that time it was the clash of the Titans between Reeder and Moses. That one goes to the Andover Huskies, and now a lead for Andover. Their first lead of the set. We're just underway. Set one, 5 4. Shimmick, back set, attack, blocked right back at the Tornadoes again. Over to Reeder. That's blocked. Boy, the Andover block has been tight here in the early going. Near side, Denicky. That's blocked by Anoka. Back set to the right side. Here comes Swanson. That's blocked in a dig attempt. And it stays down on the Andover side. That was bang, bang. Boy, Jim. that was fun right there. Both teams getting after it defensively. And this is where one thing I was talking about with some of the assistants for uh, Anoka, they said we want to try to find some of that change of pace, right? We want to be able to maybe touch one over, a little change up at the net instead of just spiking it every time. Becomes a little bit easy to block. Maddie with that drop serve. Tumbled, played by Andover. Shimmick in the middle for Hunter. Blocked back. 
Pushed by Reeder up ahead to her, then up high in the air on the Andover side. Free ball from the back row, Van Geem. Then it's Tanner. Schimmick in the middle. Here comes Reeder. Winds up and powers it through the block and then through an overhand attempted save there by McIntyre. Both teams really getting after it defensively, but that time Hayden Reeder just said, I dare you to block this one. I'm going to hit it with literally everything I have. And that time we had enough to get it through 6-5 Anoka. Tornadoes by one. Gibson serving again. It's wide. Tied at six. Serve back to the Huskies. Trying to serve to that far corner on the back line. Just wasn't able to finesse it back there. And that's a tough serve from that spot. Nice crowd on hand here tonight. You expect nothing less from a crosstown rivalry. Last year, Andover won the match 3-1 at Andover. Year before that, it was 3-2, a five-set match. They also played in the playoffs a couple of years ago. Hayden Reeder goes to the back row and misses 7-6 Huskies. Yeah, both teams just kind of trading right now. Kind of like a boxing match. Yeah, just we have sparring here a little bit early on. Yeah, what well, Anoka jumped out 3 nothing, And that's been the longest run that we've had. So who will go on the first run? That might be the team that'll take control. Harper Lean on serve, up one here, 7-6. Here is Lean, little curveball, dug out nicely by Gibson. And then it's Reeder from in front of her bench, all the way across, back row pushed ahead, Geem. Roll shot over Moses. Tanner, Schimmick, Reeder, up high, off the top of the net. It hit the block. So Anoka free to play it, some confusion. Like it was up off a rafter, came down on the Andover side. They set up Moses. Dug out Gibson. Here comes Reeder. Forces it over. Directs it to the back row. Dug out Geem. Then to the near side. The swing by Denneke and misses. Nice long. We've had some long rallies already. It's an indication of what kind of match this might be. Yeah, they were a little out of sorts there was Anoka, but they get away with it because they get the unforced air from Denneke on the, on the Andover side. But they were scrambling around. Andover was doing a nice job there. Hayden Reeder with the serve. Anoka will get it back. Tanner. Schimmick plays it over on two. Andover ready for it. And then they play it over. A little shoot there by Lenz. Schimmick left side. Brent up and over. Cross court set. Hammer down. Denneke. Point Andover. And one thing you can see early on is... You know, Andover looks like they're a little crisper with the setting at the net. Anoka not as crisp, not getting as many great chances. Seems like they're just having to bump balls over, especially on these last couple sequences. Jump serve, Denneke. Hunter, Schimmick gives it to Brent. Finds room, a spot, drives it down. Tied at eight. Andover thought that one was missed wide, but the uh, ref calls it good. Logan Brent, who I think might be, of all these hard hitters for Anoka, might be the hardest of them all. Madison Hunter serving. Sends it right down the middle. That'll be our first eighth ace for either team here. McIntyre had it deflect off her arm, then going to the end over bench. 9-8 Anoka. That one had some top spin on it. Just came down real spinny. Good serve from Madison Hunter, and McIntyre just ate her up. Hunter again. Goes back to McIntyre again. That is going to be unplayable here for Andover. That deflected and ricocheted off her arm towards the bench. 10-8. And they're going to sub out quickly right there as, the, as they'll bring the libero back in. It's a free sub, obviously, in that spot. So the libero is going to anticipate this serve from Maddie Hunter. Bocchetti, and they go right to her. Able to absorb that serve up in the air. Right side swing Johnson. Dug out back row Hunter. Left side set up Brent. And there it is from the left side. Block didn't get there in time. That Andover block was getting there before, but here quickly into their offense and their attack with the Tornadoes. Logan Brent, just that thing just comes out of there so fast. It's just really hard to get in front of it and stop it. 3-0 run here for Anoka, but that'll end here with the net serve by Hunter, and that'll side it out. They get what they need, though, out of Madison Hunter's serve. They get a little breathing room up 11-9. And now the libero will take serve. That's Addison Bocchetti for the Andover Huskies. Junior 5-6 libero wearing that black uni. Over to Reeder. Goes over on one. Bocchetti. Nice little pass and set up with the bump behind the lens. And she'll drive it down for a kill. There's somebody that Andover's super excited about. A sophomore, Danica Lenz. 5-10. 
and can do stuff like that. You got to see that matchup between Reader and her and Reader and Hella Lee for maybe the next couple of years. That'll you be bet. fun. Volcati low. 12 10 Anoka as they get the serve ready to check in as Ella Leaf. So service errors kind of stalling out both teams on the service game so far, Jim. Not able to like keep anything going for any extended period of time. Both student sections standing. Shimmick back serving coming around on the rotation. Pushed ahead to the net by Johnson over by Andover and it did miss. Oh, their job by Hayden Reeder. Did it hit her foot? Now they're calling it out and giving a point to Anoka. Okay. Very close play, though. Man, was that close. Reeder was pursuing, and then she tried to put the brakes on. It was close. Shimmick serving 13-10 Tornadoes from the back row. That's going to go over on one and cleaned up by Logan Brent at the net. It's big for the Tornadoes to try to push ahead and get a lead here up 14-10. Shimmick serving, slaps it over. Pass ahead, Johnson, set by Lean to the near side, and the kill much needed for the Huskies there by Lenz, a sophomore. That time they serve at Jada Johnson, the sophomore. Again, this very young team for the Andover Huskies, and Johnson was able to handle that serve from Shimmick perfectly, set it up nicely for Lenz. Madeline Swanson back in here for the Huskies. They'll send Grace Landry, senior 5'9". Setter will drive it across. Here's the back set by Shimmick and the drive by Brent's wide long beyond that end line point here for the Huskies. And they're clearly trying to feed Logan Brent. She's had some success here with the last few points. That time wide with it. But definitely trying to feed the hot hand. Landry serving again. Her Huskies down by two. Tanner, Shimmick. Feeds it over to Leaf, and that's going to go up and over and off the block and down. Ella Leaf. Kind of pick your poison over there when you get Abby Leaf and Ella Leaf set yep. up on that far side. Brent serving again. Three-point Anoka lead. It's the largest lead of either team here. Now will be four. Is that one in the middle by Miller missed wide? Now a four-point lead for the Tornadoes. Boy, that was a big one, too. Miller wants that one back. You can tell. Just a miss hit, I think, off her hand and went wide. And this one's going to be that overhand pass attempt by Swanson. Tried to get it to her sweater, uh, to her setter at the net. And as it turns out, it goes down point. Anoka, timeout and over. And the Tornadoes have opened up a five-point lead here in the first set. Yeah, a little miscommunication right there by the Huskies after they get that initial dig from Swanson. Nobody there to kind of fill the void on the near side. And because of that, it just drops in. Spacing not quite there where they need it for Andover, and now you see Anoka starting to kind of find their sea legs a little bit. Digging a little bit better, setting a little bit better, getting more opportunities of quality at the net. And because of that, they've been able to build a five-point lead. Both of these teams are 2-1 and one in the Northwest Suburban Conference A Division. Champlin Parks undefeated 3-0. and oh. That's Anoka's only loss yep. was to uh, Champlin Park back on Monday, September 18th, a week from tonight, a week ago tonight. It was a three to one at Champlin Park. I believe that's a match that we had here on QC TV. Yep. They had, and and uh, up to that since point, then, hadn't dropped the set. No, you know they've been you playing are right. so well. Uh, that one was a, a bit of a not a surprise because Champlin's obviously a very good team, uh, but that one certainly uh, certainly got the Tornadoes' attention for sure. And with all the success that Champlin Park has had, it's still kind of intimidating going into oh, Champlin no Park. Oh, no question about it. Not? Absolutely. Yeah, and those three sets, those are the only three set losses that Anoka has had. They've only lost three sets in 11 matches. And, of course, the uh, last four matches were best two out of three at the Hastings tournament last weekend. Their largest leader of the first set, 17-11. And they'll serve it up and over. Tip. Oh, hanging in the air was Miller. The timing was off just a little bit, but she hung there almost like the Matrix, Tim. That was very uh, It was like Nino or whatever his name was. Uh, Mr. Anderson. That's well, that's Neo. what I, you know, I get that all the time. And that was Mr. A Anderson. Way to go for uh, more, uh, Miller to hang in the air and make an adjustment. Very good athletic play right there to get the big kill. Signs it out. There's a left-hand tip over by the Tornadoes. Andover sets up Denneke. Puts it up over the block. Dug out from the back row. Diving Tanner over free ball. 
Huskies will have it on their side. Little jump set by Landry. It's up and over. Dug out Shimmick. Then it's Tanner over for Hayden Reeder. Oh, and a diving save, but unable to direct it back to the middle was Denicky. Great effort there. Point Tornadoes, 18-12. That was a good effort by Denicky to try to keep that one alive, but they set nicely for Reeder that time on the far side. Big kill, big side out. Now Tanner on serve. And here is her serve. Top of the net. Wonderful save by Vokady. They keep it alive. And then the right side drive over Swanson. Back row, steered by Brent to the net. And the Tornadoes can't recover. It stays on their side point, Huskies. Yeah, that one just fell right in front of Reeder. And just ran out of room that time. Andover needs a little something here. A little spark on this particular service game. Bryn McIntyre on serve for the Huskies. Jump serving. And she delivers. Shimmick, back set, near side leaf. It's over. Huskies ready for it. They set it up for Denicky. Off the block and down. Through the block and down. Point Huskies. There you go. It's number one. Working a little jump serve in here as well. Serving it at Logan Brent last time. Trying to maybe take her out of this play. We'll see if they come at her again. Nope, they go to the libero. Tanner this time, a little bit of a curveball over far side reader. All kinds of momentum towards the net. And then she threw the change up at him, and it falls down 19 14. Anoka with a kill there. And that's a big part of the arsenal. If Hayden Reeder can start to adapt that little change of pace into her game, we know she's got the big overhand fastball, but can she drop it in there every now and again and really change things up? That time she does it beautifully and gets the side out. Gibson serving, and that one is an ace. Looked like it was Van Geem and uh, McIntyre kind of colliding in that back row. Vokady back in for the Huskies, and it's Anoka, the first team to 20. It's always usually a good thing to be the first team to 20. Mm -hmm. Gibson, nice low serve. Over on one, hammered back, dug out back row. Van Geem, they keep it alive. That was uh, Gibson, or excuse me, Hunter in the middle that tried to clean up. Here's Hunter again with the slide attack on the back set, but it misses long. First time we've seen that attack and that slide play behind the set, uh, the setter, 2015. That's kind of one of Madison Hunter's signature moves. I think if they can get her rolling in the middle, you're going to see a little bit more of that. That time she's long with it, but that's not, uh, don't be surprised if we don't see that one again. Lean now trying to get her Huskies on a roll here, down by five. Brent, here's Reeder. Nice overhand dig, Denicky Comes right back to Denicky and wow. she powers it down. That's fantastic stuff from Allie Denicky First, you're right, the overhand dig, so she doesn't dive and take herself out of the play. She's able to make the initial dig and stay with it and then get the set back in return to finish it off. It's good stuff from Allie Denicky Coach Huberty talked to the official, our two main officials, one up on the podium, and then the floor official is right down there next to the official score. She wanted to check something, I think, with rotation. Usually they're checking either to see where they are at their rotation, if they lost track, or maybe that the other team did something wrong. Yeah, maybe so. As you can see, uh, Chris Fenwick doesn't seem super bothered by that. No. Let's check his uh, let's check his pulse. That could be the annual time to see if his pulse rate's above 65. <laughs> and uh, he's got a calm demeanor on the bench, yeah, does he? You not? don't see him stand up very much, do you? I mean, he's not uh, doesn't and, seem remotely concerned yeah. about this. And I think in a lot of sports and volleyball is probably the same case. You know that that if you've got a good team and you've got a cool demeanor like that, that means uh, you don't let things bother you when you're on the court. And uh, that usually translates down to the players and the team as well. I think it definitely has this year because, I mean, this team's been fairly calm and they get along really well. It's been a, a really tight-knit group from what we've seen this year from this Anoka team. I think it does come from kind of a sense of calm from the bench. So whatever that discussion uh, was, official still talking to our official score. We're all set. 20 to 16, Anoka leading and over serving down by four. And here is Harper Lean from the middle. Jump serve. Gibson pushes that to Shimmick. Shimmick quickly in the middle. And that is down quickly. Ivy Manning gets into the match and gets a kill in the middle. 
They just continue to find uh, players who can play at the net. And there's Ivy Manning, the young junior, getting a chance to get in here and make a play. And does just that. That's the advantage Anoka has had all season long that we've seen. A lot of teams just cannot match up with their size and their range and their length at the net. And they just keep coming, right? It's just at one one more off the bench after another, and that's been the difference. You know, the last time they really had height like this, and I don't even know when they had height like this, but certainly maybe 17, 18, you could probably think five, six years ago, they were able to have some size. Uh, but now it's, it, but for a stretch there, they didn't really have this size at the net. And Andover isn't tiny by any means no, because Miller is 6'2", Denicky's 5'10", Moses is 6'1", Lenz is 5'10", but sometimes an inch here or inch there does make a difference. Well, a height plus athleticism. Plus and, and ability to jump. No kidding. And even then, Logan Brent, who's not super tall, can jump out of the gym. Reader. Her serve for Van Geem to the net. Nice set by Lean. It's over. And then Reeder with a save in the back row goes over on one. Quick set in the middle. Tipped over Moses. And she finds a spot and drops it in. Throws the tip in to mix it up. And it's a four-point set. I'd like to see her get, I'd like to see them set more for her. Give her more opportunities at the net. Because I think she's got some real savvy. She's knocked a couple down with the overhand, but that time, again, using a little soft touch. Beautiful play there from Isabella Moses. 21-17, Andover serving down by four. They feed Brent, and that's powered off the Andover block. The tip and the point side out here to the Tornadoes with Ivy Manning getting a chance now to serve. They're three away from winning set one. And we'll see if they go right at the libero Vocati like they have a couple of times. They do just that. Vocati to lean. Cross court set. Lens. And it's down. She's had a fun first set, hasn't she? She's made a couple of big plays for this Husky team. Danica Lens giving them a little offensive spark. They're still in it. Now Vocati gets the serve for the Huskies. And Miller checks into the front row here for the Huskies. Vocati, overhand pass, Reader, Shimmick. Shimmick then gives Leaf. That's blocked back at her. And then it's over Brent. Then came right back at her off the bench off of Miller, who just checked in. Back to the Huskies. Lean, sets, back set, right side. Drive over Johnson. Dug out Reader. Here in the middle to Leaf. And she collects it and drops it down. And a big point here for the Huskies. Big and swing there because it's 23-18. Other than that, it could have been 22-19. Yeah, Abby Leaf was salivating. She wanted all of those chances at the net, and that time got the one she was looking for and put it away. That was all set up by Reeder with a great dig on the back line to keep that one alive. Shimmick serving. Plat passed ahead by Johnson, and she missed the mark. That's an ace, and now it's set point. Tornadoes starting to get a little confidence here, and Shimmick on serve. This would be a big lifter for the Tornadoes to win this first set. And her serve, overhand pass, tough to switch. And Johnson tried to do just that, flip from the underhand to the overhand, couldn't do it. That is an ace, and Shimmick started the set serving, and she finishes the set serving. It's a 25-18 Anoka win here in set one. We'll step aside, come back. Set two coming up from Anoka on QC TV Sports. Kids across America are going to school hungry. Millions of kids every day. But one simple thing can help change all of this for a hungry child in America. Good healthy food and the energy it brings. With help from caring people across America, No Kid Hungry is providing healthy meals and hope to hungry kids so they can build better futures. To learn more about ending child hunger in America, Go to HelpNoKidHungry.org today. I'm Naheem Hines, proud supporter of the Muscular Dystrophy Association. My mom has muscular dystrophy, and the MDA helps her and kids like my buddy Ethan. My name is Ethan, and I'm 12 years old. Thanks to the Muscular Dystrophy Association and people like you, I have more hope than ever before. And MDA funds over 150 care centers for kids like me. For over 70 years, MDA has been transforming the lives of people living with muscular dystrophy, ALS, and a related neuromuscular disease. Learn more at MDA.org today.
had to leave my baby in the hospital NICU. If we come together, we can help every mom and baby be healthy and strong. Joy March for Babies, a mother of a movement. Um, can I get the now bar, please? One dollar. Have a good one. Got it. Hey, what's going on? Hey. Let me get a now bar. Sure. One dollar. Appreciate you. Got it. Three, five, six, one, Back at the Anoka Fieldhouse, we are getting set for set two. Anoka winning set one, 25-18, along with Tim Anderson. I'm Jim Erickson. Tim, your thoughts on that first set? I think it kind of played out exactly how Anoka wanted it to. I mean, it was a little bit of a struggle out of the gate, some unforced service errors on both sides. But then about the middle of the set, Anoka kind of started finding their stride, right? Started making some service runs, started getting some opportunities at the net, better setting, better digging setting guys up a little bit, well spaced out on the floor. I thought it was a really uh, efficiently played set by the Tornadoes. Uh, Huskies battled. Want to see the Huskies try to serve a little cleaner here in set two. Give more opportunities for Moses and Miller and Lenz at the front. If they can give them more chances, I think the Huskies have a chance to battle back here in game two. I think the, the matchup's okay. The Andover block and the Andover defense was really good early on in the set. Anoka must have made some adjustments there a little bit later as the set went on to kind of beat that. Well, you saw Reeder do a couple change of pace things, and I thought that worked pretty well for them. Andover serving here in set two, and there's a drive. Oh, and it stayed alive. A fortuitous bounce off the girder. Comes back here. Shimmick sets up Leaf. That's blocked back. Pushed over on the first by Brent. And the Huskies are ready for that, but they get it to the net and can't keep it alive. Point here for the Tornadoes. Maybe a little poetic justice there for Logan Brent, because I think she felt like she had a pretty good spike at it before, yes. but stayed alive. That time just decides, I'm going to change it up completely, throw it over on the first try, and see if we can't uh, throw them off. And that kind of worked. 1 0 in Oka. Shimmick serving it here for the Tornadoes. So they got the early side out. Swanson comes back to her over. Shimmick sets for Brent, rolls it up over the block. Vokati back set near side, but it's going to miss wide. On the attack by Lenz, 2 nothing. Tornadoes up a set here in set two. Early on, Shimmick had success in game one serving at Swanson. Wonder if she'll continue to do that here. She did that the first two points out. We'll see if she continues. JV match earlier tonight, won by Anoka, 2-0. And that one is dunked at the net. Looked like Brent, wasn't it? Yeah, looked like it indeed. Got the referee here right in front of me, but I think it was Brent, and it came over yeah. off of the pass, and she two-hands slammed it. Makes a better door than she does a window. We can't see anything there. But, but she's the, necessary. Necessary. We, we have to have her there. We would not be able to do this match without our officials. You, you can continue to be a door. Yes. <laughs> That's another yeah. good point for Anoka. <laughs> one. I'm a better door than a window. Did you already use that? I already used you that. You already used that. Oh, darn. I went with that one. I that opened with it. One. That was a good one. Shimmick has uh, gotten off to a nice run here. 4-0 Anoka to the back row. Cross the attack line here to the net, rolling it over Swanson. And as Brent Shimmick sets up, trying to keep it alive and reaching and diving towards the net was Leaf. And ends up being a point here for Anoka. Ella seems a, a little bit, uh, a, a little uncomfortable. I feel like she's jumped early a couple, two, three times. Just seems a little... Just, you know, maybe doesn't quite have her sea legs underneath or her yet. Overly here. Pumped up maybe too, overly maybe. pumped up. Maybe overly pumped up. Yeah, just kind of a little early on everything so far for young Ella. Back row attack. 
And Deneke is off balance there, not quite ready for it. And it's a 6-0 start here for Anoka. And uh, Connie Huberty, the only coach the Huskies have ever had, will make and take the time out here and uh, try and stop this run here as Anoka's jumped out early. I feel like if you're Connor Huberty now, you've got to stay as long as you can to be this record holder. You've got to set an impossible bar. Let's take a look at rankings while we have a second, Jim, as uh, Connie Huberty tries to rally the troops here. Rankings heading in, uh, it's obviously super competitive. Uh, and if we take a look at these, hopefully popping up. There they are right there. Why is that in Class 4A, Jim? Any, uh, anything stick out to you? I mean, doesn't seem, seems like a lot of the usual suspects, right? Yes, a lot of the same teams. Uh, Rogers just continues to get better and better in their sports. Once they made the move from the Mississippi 8 to the Northwest Suburban, uh, they said, okay, we got to ramp up our competition. we got to ramp up our youth. we got to ramp up our middle school, what have you. And they have done that. I mean, they have fit in in the higher classes and the higher rankings uh, ever since making that move. So they look good. Egan's always there. Burnsville, I don't remember them being a power for many years, right? That's so, kind of a new one, right? Yeah, That's the, yeah. the outlier, if you will. Yeah, it's good to see the Blaze in there. It's good to see new teams mixed with the teams that are perennial favorites. Teams battle back and forth. Couple of free balls. Great save by Reeder. And Anoka gets it over. Now Denneke scrambles. Here's a set by Landry. And they're going to call it for a double hit. You don't see the double hit called quite as often, but that one had to have been obvious. Boy, the and it's 7-0. Huskies had to be surprised right there. I think they felt like they had a point. Might have got caught flat-footed. Couldn't believe that ball got over. That was just a great effort play by the Tornadoes. Schimmick on a 6-0 service run here. We said that she goes on runs. And she's on one now. Now she'll set it up. Cross court to Brent. And some octane into that one. Goes down the line. 8-0. Yeah, Tornadoes are on a heater here in set two. They're getting what they want. And they've got Shimmick serving. Very consistent with her serves. And that's just a great way to start. That is going to be tough to redirect in. Do they get it over? They don't. No. Outside the antenna. And another one here for the Tornadoes. And the Shimmick serving and the Tornadoes attack. Whatever they're doing right now has really got the Huskies off balance on their heels. They're still firing. I think they might have switched some things around, set their setup, moved away from Swanson on the back line, moved her up a bit. And yep, now they're coming at somebody different, Ali Denneke. Denneke up ahead. Landry sets up and Swanson. Cross court off the block and down lateral along the net. And Andover gets their first point here, the second set. They're down 9-1, to one and they're looking up at that 9-1 mountain here and got to chip away. Nice adjustment, though, by Connie Huberty to slide around that back line, add a fourth person back there, move Swanson down, and let that serve go at Denneke. Van game with the serve. In the middle, short little set, and the long reach by Leaf. I didn't think she was going to get to it, but she high-pointed that ball and then tipped it down, and it's 10-1. to 1. Yeah, that was very Statue of Liberty type stuff there very from Abby so. Leaf and just kind of sky-hooked it to the ground. I worked a couple of references in there. The Brent serve. Anoka gets it in on the Andover side. They scramble a bit. It's a free ball. Shimmick will get a good set. Near side, Leaf off the block and down. There's the yellow Leaf you're looking for right in rhythm right in time been kind of wanting to see one of those we got one right there thanks to roger way our official water provider of tonight's broadcast as always huskies push it over to the tornadoes Tanner, Schimmick, perfect set to reader up off the block to the back row scrambling nice work by Volcati to steer it to the middle Brent Schimmick. Here's Leaf, and she just missed. Wow. Oh, by inches, far side, right in front of the Husky bench. Abby Leaf looking aggressive, trying to get one she likes right there. Thought she had a cookie on the far side, just missed it wide. And now Bryn McIntyre for a much needed service game here for the Huskies. Down by nine. They go to Tanner. Gets it to Shimmick, who comes to Reeder. Perfect down the line, and that one's in. The set was right in her wheelhouse, and she put it right on the paint. Yeah, that was tailor-made for Hayden Reeder, and she was all ready for it. It was full unload on that one. Easy one for Hayden Reeder to put away. 12-2. Tanner. To the back row, Geem, Van Geem, oh, and a set, double hit on the set. 
trying to feed uh, Moses. And that'll give it here to the Huskies, or excuse me, to the Tornadoes. Up by 11 now, their largest lead, 13-2. And Moses trying to keep Grace Landry invested here, a little joking on that after that. So trying to keep the mood light for the Huskies. Tanner goes deep, overhand pass Van Geem, Denneke. That's Doug. Nice job by Shimmick. And then it's over, free ball by Reeder. Throws it to the back row, Van Geem. Set by Landry. Battle at the net, Denneke wins the battle. Off of Anoka and down, point Huskies. It's just important right now if you're Andover to not, you know, just to keep doing what you just did right there. Make a big kill, make a stop, keep smiling. Keep, uh, just tell yourself you're in this game. Let's chip away. Try to get three, four points on this service game. Get it back 13-7, see what happens. Lean serving. I don't know if we've had a service error yet here this set. Set up Leaf and she powers it through the net. Ella Leaf. The sophomore through the block and down as she'll check out here for the Tornadoes, 14-3. That's two in a row there for, for Ella Leaf. Did a really nice job. Again, just being in rhythm that time. Early in the game, struggled to be in rhythm. Last two points for her, perfect. Gibson deep to Denneke, the overhand pass, then set up lean to the line. Dug out at the net, and the Tornadoes can't find it. It was really tight to the net, and it's down on their side. And it's a point here for Andover. They've got it to within 10 here. It's 14-4. They really need a run. Yeah, they do. And, and Gibson looked a little off balance right there trying to handle that dig. Kind of gave up herself on that and took herself out of the play. Didn't give her a chance to set that up nicely. Kind of dove at it. Kind of fell over, if you will. First time serving. That was much better. Is Izzy Roy. Dug out Volcati. Kept alive, and they got a player that went across the midline. That's a violation, and a side out to Anoka at a point for the Tornadoes up 15-4. Yeah, just not able to get on any long service runs that time. Much better for Madeline Gibson. They served right at her. She was more prepared for that one. Reader, wonderful serve. Equally wonderful uh, dig back there by number nine. That was Izzy Roy just came in last serve, and that one didn't make it over. That's four hits for the Tornadoes point to the Huskies. Yeah, Manning tried to climb the ladder on that set, jumped too early, and uh, had nowhere to go with it. Timing is everything on those kind of plays. No question. Here's Volcati serving. Back to 10. Maybe they get down to single digits here if they can. Shimmick for Brent, and that's going to be a point and a powerful kill by Brent in the middle. Uh, credit the Tornadoes. Every time a side out happens for the Huskies, the Tornadoes are quick to answer. They don't allow Andover to get on any kind of service run. And now Manning gets a chance on serve. Ivy Manning, Jr. Setting it as lean. Goes back set. Off the block. Dug back out. Landry with that attack. Now they come back to the opposite side. And the attack by Lenz is down the line off of the Tornadoes for a point. And again, it's back to 10 here. But that's as close as the Huskies have been able to get it. Very impressed, though, with Danica Lenz. Uh, she has made a lot of good plays in this game for the Huskies. Again, want to see them continue to try to set up for those up-front hitters. Landry in. Tornadoes let it go on that far side and hit the line. Using every inch of the court on the ace by Grace Landry. Now they're firing at Madeline Gibson, but wouldn't be surprised if Reeder steps in front of this one if the opportunity presents itself. Huskies have it down to nine. That was kind of an elbow save, it looked like, from the back row. And then Reeder over free ball. Volcati set by Landry. Quickly in the middle. Big swing by Miller. Dug out Reeder. Now it's Brent. Rolls it over. Volcati set by Landry. Near side lens. Reeder showing her defense ability in the back row. And then it's Brent on the left outside. And hammers it down. But, uh, boy, the defense in the back row by Hayden Reeder was impressive. Yeah, Hayden Reeder basically just said, I got the whole back line. Everybody yeah. clear out. I got it all back here. Made all the digs that time. And Logan Brent able to put it away at the net. Fantastic stuff from the Tornadoes and Hayden Reeder. She is going side to side, back and forth. 17-7, Shimmick serving. The set Landry here. Tipped over by Miller, and she finds the court. Nice job by Morgan Miller, the senior. It's kind of the right, that was the right move. They say, hey, where's, where's Hayden Reeder not at? Over there? Okay, let's hit it over there. Let's try that. Good move. 
and they're able to get the big side out. But again, you're right, Jim. They haven't really been able to chip any closer than this. Nine points down. They need a run. The Van Geem serve. And that's an ace. Great serve. Unplayable there by Logan Brent. That one just dove off the table as it crossed the net. 17-9. They have it to an eight. Can Van Geem do that again? Goes to Reeder. Schimmick in the middle for Leaf. Back row. Van Geem. They come to Denneke, but that is going to be another legal hit, double hit. That's three of them on the Huskies here in this second set. Yeah, you're right. Sometimes we can go whole whole matches without oh, seeing one of those, yes. and we've seen three in this set alone. Really calling that tight. The Logan Brent serve. That's going to be trouble. Yep. No chance of playing that. Another point here for the Tornadoes. 19-9, timeout and over. That lead is back to 10 here for the 10-1 and one Anoka Tornadoes. I think that was a strategic mistake in the last service game for the Huskies. They serve at Reeder that time, and she's red hot digging the ball out. So I would want to serve away from her as much as humanly possible. Try to put the pressure on somebody else to dig it out, make a play. I wouldn't want to give Reeder a chance to set and set somebody up front. It, it just seems like it's too easy for the Tornadoes at this point whenever they get that opportunity. Tim, quick 30-second Anoka High School speech preview. Oh, man, I'll tell you what. It's uh, it's coming up fast. The speech season, the winter season in general is coming up. Yes. Uh, a lot of recruiting starting in the next couple of weeks. Uh, anybody in the QC audience, especially if you're Anoka Tornado, I encourage you to go to all the speech preseason meetings. But if you're in the area in general, the entire district could really use more build in their speech programs. The Champlin folks, wonderful coaches up there. Uh, you got to go see uh, uh, Katie up there in, in Champlin. You got to go see. Who, I haven't met the new coach at Andover, but you have to go and support that program. They, they need it. We need it as a district. Support Katie up at Champlin. Uh, David at uh, Coon Rapids and Blaine, Nate at Blaine. Uh, we really could use more, more kids out there doing some public speaking. It's fun stuff. Take it from somebody whose speech coach in his high school begged and pleaded for him to be on the speech team, and I didn't think it was cool. So I said, <laughs> you know, I'll just stick with sports, and now I kind of wish that I would have. It would have uh, added to my high school experiences. Take it from me. I'm saying you could have both in this life. Yes, that's you the can. most beautiful that's, thing. That's, that is the beautiful thing. And who knows, I might be a bit better speaker than I am at this point in time. Denneke with a kill. Well, you definitely would have won in some of those categories where having that pleasing baritone well, would have came into broad, play. She kept telling me they have an announcer category they or something They did for the longest then. time yeah, back in had, the, yeah. You know, I could have read the news or sure something could and, have. Went, and won state championships. I mean, I wasn't going to win a state championship in anything else. You could have thrown that right in the face of Jason DeRussia. I tell might. you what, he's, <laughs> he brags about that still. I might go back in time if I can find a DeLorean. <laughs> And 1.21 uh, gigawatts, 20 to 11. Anoka has a lead by nine. Andover has the serve right to left. McIntyre, Tanner, Shimmick sets up Leaf. Spe Good night. Speaking of 1.21 gigawatts, there's yeah. a bolt of lightning from Abby Leaf. Puts that one down in the uh, back up by 10 of the Tornadoes. That was about 88 miles an hour, was it not? I would say that's fair, right? Pretty close yeah. to it. Check your flux capacity. Here's Tanner serving 21-11 long. Boy, boy. I think that's our first service error this set yeah, on, Allie, either, on either side. And Allie's about as reliable as it gets from back there, so she won't do that very often. But that time, that thing was long by like seven miles. So 21-12. But again, Andover running out of points if they keep exchanging them back and forth here with the Tornadoes in the second set. Served over lean. Here's Shimmick. Quick little short set, shorter than she wanted. Manning adjusts to the back row. Brent, Schimmick, Reeder off the block, in the air. It's second row on the far side. It's a kill and a point for the Tornadoes. I know you think that by serving at Hayden Reeder, you take her out of the play, but I just don't think that's the case. She's so technically sound. I would serve away from her at any point in time. By serving at her, you're not taking her out. You're keeping her engaged in the play, and you're letting the ball stay on that side of the floor. So they're able to set back for her pretty easily, just like they did on that last one. Gibson, Vokati almost uh, rolled up her arm to Denneke. Tanner, Schimmick. There's Ivy Manning, and she hit the line. Went cross court from the middle, which isn't easy to do, but she hit the line 23-12. 
Hey, we need a ball, yep, and we gotta get the uh, students off the floor. Referee's yelling at that, good call. Students getting excited they here on both sides. They gotta realize they can't be on the floor. Yeah, they can't, cannot be on the floor. that ball might be coming their way. Tipped over, good scramble, kept alive by Gibson. Then Reeder into the net cable, and it's down on the Anoka side. 23-13 point to the Huskies, yep. trying to stay alive here. Second set, Anoka won the first set, 25-18. That's again, I'd like to see them find a way to get Isabella Moses more involved at the net. When, she's a, when she gets a chance, I think good things happen for the Huskies. Serving Izzy Roy. Shimmick the set from the attack line, and another one for Reeder, and it's set point. Yeah, Hayden Reeder's taking over the set. Uh, just absolutely taking it over. It's been super impressive. From and the defense, on the offense, now serving. She's done it yeah. all in this game. Yeah, she gets to serve. Lobs it over to the back row. Passed ahead, Roy. Scrambling a bit lean. And it's over. Right back to Reeder. What a pass to Shimmick. She tips it over on two. Now the quick set by Landry. And that gets the tornadoes and catches them off balance as Moses puts it down to keep the set alive here for Andover. Yeah, exactly. Giving her an opportunity at the net. And sometimes, yeah, throwing it out on two, giving, giving something different. Changing things up. That time it works perfectly. But again, you're facing 10 set points. Here's the Volcati serve. Reader, Shimmick, back set. Big hit by Manning. Comes right back at him. Shimmick now will set up Dominguez, who's in. Her first attack of the night. That's dug out Volcati here to the near side. Over by Lenz, and that's in. Another point here for Andover. Keeping it alive here on set point. Yep, still fighting off nine more set points, but uh, you'll take that. 24-15, nice low serve. What a dig on that back row by Gibson. Over to the Huskies. Cross court set, Lenz. Back row off of Reeder, and that's going to be into the bench. Yeah, Tanner and Reeder get a little uh, miscommunicated, get their wires crossed up there as they both went for it same time. We'll see where they serve here. They might go right at Gibson in the back line. Bocati again to Reeder. Her passes have been right on point. In the middle, Miller, or excuse me, uh, Manning had a tip back at her. Comes back to the Huskies. Back set for Landry. Overhand pass, and they kept it alive momentarily, but the run continues here as it stays on the Anoka side. And a nice run for Andover. They have it to seven now. So they sub out Dominguez, bring Logan Brent back in here. We'll see if they go back at Reader again. Vocati. Nope. No, off of Gibson. And that'll be an A serve. And that makes a lot of sense for me. I mean, they want to put the pressure on Gibson. Now Chris Fenwick's going to take a timeout yeah. and talk it over. Yeah, you know, they're still up by six. It's still set point, but good timeout. Good use of the timeout there. Just kind of settle things down and try to get his tornadoes. Back on the same page, back to what they were doing before. Because sometimes you're up 24-14 or whatever, you think it's over, yeah, right? And then you get that mentality in your head. You go, oh, we don't even have to play anymore because eventually the other team will make a mistake and we're going to go on and take a two sets to a lead. But Anoka, or excuse me, Andover hasn't been making any mistakes. Yeah, it's a lapse of concentration, right? You start to think, yeah, the game's over, the match is over, let's move yeah. on to set number yeah. three. But it's like, now you got to take care of business here. And you're not necessarily in the most optimum lineup here as well. You have Reader on the back line. Gibson playing in the middle. You got Tanner, which are two pretty good backline players, but you'd love to have Reeder up front in this spot to put the set away. So that's why they have uh, Brent back out there because they're looking to probably set her, I would think, coming out of this. You play a lot of golf. I play a lot of golf. It's like hitting a great seven iron in on a on the pin. You're four feet away, and you're walking up thinking it's an automatic birdie, and then you, still you got, miss the putt. Still right? got to make the putt. I mean, you you got to put it. Make it's the putt. not over until it's in the you hole. You still right? got to finish. 24-18. How much further can Andover go here? And it's powered, and there's the point by Anoka. Too much power there for Logan Brent. And Anoka finally gets that point to win this set. 25-18, the identical score from set number one. Anoka will take a 2-0 lead into set three, and we come back to him and Jim back here at the Anoka Fieldhouse after this on QCTV Sports. to dance and dream of a better life, a brighter future.
today, thanks to Children International and friends like you, she dances for the world. Together, we give children in poverty a chance to set their sights high and achieve their dreams. Learn more about Children International and join us in our life-changing work at children.org today. Mom was always organized, but she started forgetting to pay her bills on time. And she'd buy the same gifts over and over. Telling the girls about my Alzheimer's diagnosis was really hard. At first we had our cries, but then we were like, okay, let's make a plan. Early detection gave us time to adapt together. It's so important for you to think about what you can do and making the most of what you have. If you or your family are noticing changes, it could be Alzheimer's. Talk about seeing a doctor together. You're not going to get it all right. Just make sure you nail the big stuff. Like making sure your kids are in the right seat for their age and size. Get it right at NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Monday in September, first Monday of fall, and Anoka winning that second set, 25-18, and quite honestly, it didn't look like it was going to finish that close. Andover with a nice run. They got it a little bit tighter at the end, Tim, and they hope that they can use that momentum coming in here to the third set, but instead, the always steady Carmen Schimmick ends up with an ace, and it's one nothing. Yeah, sometimes in sports, you know, the other team just comes out and gets you early, and that's kind of what happened in set two. Anoka came out, set the tone, got a big lead early, and then just kind of coasted in. Shimmick, Vokady, setting lean, then a back row drive by Denicky up amongst the rafters, bouncing around up there, and even Reeder can't get to it along that back line, and we're tied at one. Yeah, Hayden Reeder basically had a cape on in, in set two along yeah. with Logan Brent. They basically took the whole set over there at one point. Uh, but uh, that time, not able to handle all of that. Good job by Andover to get the kill. They need to have a nice start to this set. Can't fall behind early. Van Game serving. Steering it back as Lee from her bench. Good adjustment there. And now a double hit again. Boy, oh on boy. Andover, 2-1 Anoka siding out and getting the serve. And I think, yeah, Coach Hubert, he's having to coach up the kids a little bit here because that's, yeah, not a common thing. To see that four times in a match is really tough. Great ace. How about that one? Sinking curveball from Logan Brent, 3-1. to one. Her Brent is, again. Her game is so solid this it year, is. Logan Brent. Right side off the net. Did they touch it? Did Ann? Did Anoka <laughs> touch it? They're saying... Yes, yes, they did. <laughs> so off the Anoka block. They were pleading. They were campaigning. Campaigning almost instantly, which almost yes. makes you look more guilty, I think. That's right, kind man. of the problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see Hayden Reeder looks at her teammates. Pinky promise on that one. I totally yeah. didn't do it. We have the two lines judge, line judges, and the two officials. Hayden Reeder still holding up the pinky. Here. Pinky promise, she says. I swear to you, I did uh, not touch it. 
But that's a bang bang play. You almost have to go to the instant replay review at that point. I don't think we can allow. I don't think pinky promises count, though. Oh, they're going to no. give it to him. Oh, wow. So after discussion, that's tough. So the original call reversed after a four-way discussion. So, so that means it was on the net, meaning it stayed on the side of the Huskies. Thus, four hits. Ties it and makes it now four to one. Scoreboard showed 1-1 one, one there for a moment. Reader to the update. net, powers it off the block. And that one's off the Andover block and down 5-1 Tornadoes. Boy, it's amazing how much that turns the momentum, doesn't oh. it? All of a sudden it could be 3-2, now it's 4-1, now it's 5-1. Changes everything. Brent set by Lean to the net with a tip and down. Landry floating to the net. Tips it down, 5-2, Anoka up, Andover getting the serve. Yeah, I like that from Landry. Kind of mixed it up there, didn't know who was going to come. A little deception, perhaps, from the Andover Huskies at the net. It worked out perfectly. Here comes McIntyre. The Tanner. Schimmick goes back to get it beyond the attack line. Finds Reeder. Back row dig by Van Geem. Right side roll shot, Landry. Then it's Schimmick. Tanner, Brent from the back row, and she misses long. Big point there for the Andover Huskies. Going to keep McIntyre on serve. Now, here's my thought. She's been jump serving most of the night. I'm not a huge fan of the jump serve unless you can make an ace with it or create some funky spin. I don't think her jump serve is that difficult to deal with. McIntyre serves it over, then Shimmick. They get the set to Reader. And a textbook kill. 6-3. I mean, that serves just firing right at the libero Tanner, and she doesn't even have to move. Like, she doesn't have to make any adjustments physically to get to that ball. She's able to pop it right up in the air, and it's a pretty easy bump set spike. Damn, then Tanner comes back with an ace. Drops it in front of uh, Claire Van Geem. Dives to try to get to it, but that one tumbled. It's 7-3, Tornadoes. Trying to break a five-match losing streak here against Andover. Tanner, that's a knuckler. That one didn't spin a single inch, but Andover still got to it. Denneke knocks it over. They set up Reeder, goes to the back row, and it is out Play long up. and a point Andover. It was such great hustle by Carmen Schimmick, but yeah, way too long for Reeder that time. But I didn't think that was even going to get that far. Schimmick hustling yes. like crazy to get to that. Another jump serve chance for the Huskies. Overhand pass. That was a line drive from Tanner to Schimmick, and it ends up in a point with Reeder. It's the little things that Carmen Schimmick does, and there's an example of that right there. Not a perfect dig from, from Allie Tanner, but a nice job of staying with it and getting enough height on it to set it for her teammate Reeder and get the kill. Gibson serving. Anoka's doubled up the Huskies here, 8-4. Down the side and Ooh, out. Just missed the yeah. line. It was just inside of the antenna here on the near side. And uh, just outside of the line. They'll give it here to the Huskies. Service opportunity coming for Izzy Roy. Roy, one of the seniors. She serves it overhand. Tanner, Schimmick. Reader high off the block. Bocati. Landry back set. Swung right side. Swanson comes right back to her on a free ball. That was hanging over the net. Tornadoes, though, recover to reset. Landry set. Middle drive. Moses blocked. Point for Anoka. I think that's Ivy Manning there yep. in that middle hitter position. Taking care of business at the net. Now puts Hayden Reader on serve. 9-5 Anoka. And we'll see if we'll see if they serve here again on the back line or if they go at Izzy Roy on the other side here this time. Hayden Reeder seldom has doesn't have a smile on her face. She almost always has a smile from the attack line. Oh, and that one went in. Oh, nice job there. Gibson let it go thinking it might be long, maybe not sure of where she was on the floor. Missed her spot. 9-6, Andover serving. Their libero, Addison Vocati. Big Andover football victory on Friday and a shootout against Elk River right here on QC TV. I think 2,000 points were scored in that game. That's close to it. 
At the net, here's Brent, and she drops it in. Boy, Logan Brent continuing just having a terrific season. Abby Leaf checking in. Allie Tanner sitting down. And Ivy Manning back to serve. Anoka 10-6. Up two sets to zero on the first two sets. Identical 25-18 scores. Dig attempt by Gibson ends up towards us here. Three or four rows up. Kill for Andover. They get the point. But, you know, both those sets were identical scores, but they got to those finals. We got to those finals in various, yeah, very different two, ways. Two very different games entirely. Two different sets. Uh, first game felt like, you know, a nice little back and forth for a good chunk of it. And then kind of a boat race to start the second set for Anoka. This set has played out a little bit more, again, a little more like the first one. Turner. Keeping it alive as Reeder. Then she gets it. Back row attack. And Andover does a nice job scrambling. It's over free ball. Reeder, Shimmick sets up. Slide attack to the back row. Abby Leaf got her hand on it. Able to direct it and drive it down back row. There was nobody back there for the Huskies. 11-7. Yeah, maybe not the most perfect or, or prettiest setup you've ever seen. But Abby Leaf, the senior, stays with it. Able to put that one away. Continuing to build that confidence for Shimmick, who's back on serve. Yes, she is, and she serves it to Roy. Set by Lean, over, off the Tornadoes, and down, and point for the Huskies. Yeah, Grace Landry able to get what she needs that time, as just gets enough of the net to get that to fall over on the other side, get the kill for the Huskies. Now 11-8, this is going to be a critical service game coming up for Andover. Trying to keep this match alive and get it to a fourth set. Nice low serve. Nice dive by Tanner. Back set, Brent, and that's a kill. Well, Katie got an arm on it, but that was all she got on it. You know, Point just, to Noka. You know, just like the end of set two, uh, they bring Brent in to get the big kill to win the set. Right there again, Logan Brent is there. Whenever they need a big point, that's who they go to. Makes another big play. And she serves it. Landry over, Tanner, Shimmick. Quick set in the middle for Leaf. And Abby Leaf, a middle kill, 13-8. I think they've got something in the middle right now. If they want to set for Abby Leaf here down the stretch in this game, I think that would be all right to do. I think they would score a lot. Brent Vokady, lean sets, cross court, and Ali Denicky off of the block comes back at him, 14-8. And that's the Leaf sisters right there acting more like trees. Oh, yeah. Anoka serving again over its Brent comes over on one low hanging fruit right there for Reeder just hanging there like a pinata and hammers it and the candy comes out and it's a point here for Anoka they lead 15-8 and a timeout for Andover I love that analogy on your part right there Jim well done first time I've used that that's, just came that's to brilliant me. I mean, this is you're a wordsmith so if we did have a pinata what was what's your ideal candy coming out of there? Oh, if we could get some Reese's peanut butter cups in oh, there, if we could get some uh, Jolly get some Ranchers. Twix. I mean, yeah. I'm talking hard candy. Oh, I'm hard talking, candy. Yeah, but Skittles is probably yeah. my go-to then. Yeah, All is. right, we got to talk uh, the Anoka Tornado schedule, Jim, coming up. They got Blaine, which is right here on Thursday. I think we're right back here on Thursday. We are right that back one. here, exactly. Uh, Robbinsdale comes up as well. Armstrong, I should say, Maple Grove at Maple Grove. Uh, then That'll we're back, be a good match. back again. Here I am for the Hutchinson game, and then they finish with Minneapolis Southwest. So home games coming, four out of five for the Huskies. They've got a uh, couple road games, a couple home games at Centennial. Uh, home to Rogers, home to Buffalo, at Spring Lake Park, finishing uh, home to Champlin Park. I'm unfamiliar with the Hutchinson program. As am I. Uh, are they a state tournament uh caliber kind of team that that seems like an odd matchup Especially for them late to come the here to Anoka late in the season yeah. if it's possible both teams are looking for a match and you know they put that out there we need a match on this date and of course there is the crossover Tuesday October 17th the A and B divisions will cross over you'll see the two champs from each division play and then two versus two three versus three here in the Northwest Suburban Conference on October 17th as well. 16-8, Anoka up by eight. And Brent continuing on the service run. It's pushed over Landry, Brent, Shimmick, back set, Leaf, and over ready. Denicky over free ball. Tried to steer it to the near back corner and just missed. Good call by Brent to let it go. Once again, 
Tornadoes right when the Huskies feel like they're in it. 10-7, they're not too far away. Just like that, it's a 7-1 to one run. Vokady high in the air. Along the back line is Geem, the Vokady free ball. Tanner, Schimmick, Reader, directional tip. And she puts it down in front of the Husky bench, and it's 18-8. Reader did a great, great job steering that ball and great vision of the court. Absolutely. To find that open spot. Serving again is Brent over free ball. That's the best Andover's been able to do the last couple of times. Shimmick, quick set, tipped over Leaf. Dug out Bocati. And then it's Miller blocked on the Denneke pushover. And it comes back to the Huskies. And oh. kicked around. A great save by Tanner. It's <laughs> over. And Andover to set up again to Denneke. Dug out, kept alive. That was Shimmick to Brent and then rolled over by Reeder. Great rally here. And that's out. Oh, man. And Katie from just a step outside the attack line tried to hit it long off the end line, but she missed. And 19 8 Anoka, timeout and over. And I think, like, digs like the one Tanner had are such deflators to the other team because you think for sure you got a point there, right? You got the kill you want, you got the side out, and all of a sudden the ball comes floating back over, and you got to make another play. And you give yep. a chance for Anoka to reset themselves. And that's it, just, again, I think right there, that's what happened to Andover. That ball came over from Tanner. I don't think they knew what to do with that. And they just weren't able to set themselves again to make a point. Now it's 19-8, and it's looking a little dark here for the Andover Huskies. Yeah, big hole to try and climb out of here. Get a look at those standings. Yeah, you get a look at those. Maple Grove right there, obviously. Champlin having a great, another great season. Champlin mm -hmm. works fantastic. Anoka obviously is, was right there with a great season themselves. And then after that, it's, you know, some teams that are trying to find their way. Blaine, Coon Rapids, Centennial. This Andover team's in reload mode after losing somebody like Avery yep. Bowles last year. It's a total rebuild for them a little bit. I expect them to be much stronger even next season. This young team has got some talent. I really like a lot of the Andover players. Last I checked, Rogers was leading the B division of the Northwest Suburban Conference. Huskies have it on their side. There's Brent to the net to Shimmick. Tipped over Leaf. Back set right side. Landry over. Dug out again on the back row. Brent to Shimmick to Reeder. Oh, that was a great dig. Van Geem kept it alive, pushed over Volcati, and then the dig off the top of the net, tipped around, and into the net, the Tornadoes. Yes. Anoka in the net, point for Andover. Sliding all that. over the floor that time. <laughs> Couldn't keep themselves straight. Gave up that point as they got over that line, gave the easy one to the Huskies. It's still 19-9. We're right back where we were, sort of in set number two. Yes. McIntyre, Reeder, Schimmick, jump set, Leaf. Right onto the shins of Lee. Nothing she could do. Off her shins and down. And uh, Abby Leaf, a kill there. She's off to the bench. Substitution Tanner to serve. A strong third set from Abby Leaf. They were setting for her, and she was taking advantage of it. Anoka's made it to 20. A 20 to 9 lead. Vokady with the high pass. Comes to the net. Landry blocked back, or no, it hit the net. There was no block, no contact. Stays on the Andover side. And Anoka's a 21-9 leader right now here, up two sets to zero. So they bring Piper Vaughn in for Ella Leaf in this section. Might mean that could be Piper Vaughn's serve. Nope, it's going to be Allie Tanner's serve. So they go with that. They also go with Elena Wilberg. Tanner's serve. Denneke. Lean back to Denneke through the block. And Allie Denneke, probably the top uh, attacker and, and hitter for Anoka or for Andover, but Anoka's found a way to kind of isolate her and uh, neutralize her a little bit. Point, That's her first kill in a while. It's going to be really fun watching Allie Denneke and Danica Lenz versus Hayden Reeder and Ella Leaf. Can't get enough. These well, next couple years, sophomores, sophomores yes. I mean, Two more years of that, how fun is that? Both crowds kind of giving each other the uh, the business here on both <laughs> sides. Again, uh, no, uh, as long as it's all in good it's fun. It's all in good fun, right. I, I'd like to think, although there's not a ton of love lost between these uh, these oh, two schools right, right now.
So coming out of this timeout, it's 21-10. I believe it'll be a service time here for Andover, and it's going to be Grace Landry on the back line. Nice overhand pass, Brent. Schimmick, Wilberg dug out, Bocati. Landry sets, tipped over Moses. Tornado, Schimmick, back set. Vaughn the hit, the block. Teams exchange the ball, push to the back side. Brent ready, Schimmick finds Manning, and that's blocked, and it's in. That's an ace block. It appeared to be Moses who got her arms on that. And it's 21-11. This is an all right setup for Andover up front. You got Brent on the back line. Not as much size up front. Landry. Wilberg, Schimmick gives it to Wilberg. Off the block, Tanner, Schimmick to the back row and Brent. But it's on down on the Anoka side. It was a block there for Andover again. That's back-to-back -back blocks, 21-12. Yeah, that one's going to be an easy one for Isabella Moses because Brent is not right at the net against her. She's going to see that coming. Nice steer to the middle on the pass by Wilberg on the serve receive. Driven over Vaughn. Volcati plays it backwards to Denicky, but she's in the net, 22-12. That's what Anoka was probably going to need there, an unforced error. Tornado fans having a little too much fun there, and now Piper Vaughn gets on serve. They have some kind of an orchestrated thing, like it's, I don't know, like kicking a field goal or something. Yeah, that was an interesting... I think it's, uh, a, it's a cosplay or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> There's in the middle, driven down, and a kill here for Ivy Manning, point for Anoka, 23-12. The Anoka fans are dressed in Hawaiian garb, and the Andover fans went with the red, white, and blue. American theme. Vaughn serving. Jump set to the net. Moses off the block. Nice dig by Wilberg, and then Wilberg with a save. Great hustle there. Only fitting that they just played the hustle by Van McCoy. <laughs> Here's Schimmick over to Wilberg. Tried the roll shot to get up over the block, but it doesn't make it over. And uh, it ends up down on the Anoka side, 23-13. I'll tell you what, yeah, Wilberg coming in off the bench, bringing in a lot of energy, a lot of hustle, making some plays, being very active with her time in on this set. 23-13, Anoka two points away from wrapping it up. Serving is Izzy Roy. Schimmick from the back row, it's Brent. Bocati, Landry, back set to the net, punched over Swanson. And Brandt was ready for it, and then it's Schimmick, Wilberg over. Husky set up. Lenz drops it down off of the Tornado's point here for Andover. And serving again, Izzy Roy. They were setting for Wilberg a ton, giving her lots of chances coming in. Now they'll bring Reeder back in, maybe in sort of the Mariana Rivera role here to close yeah. this out. Yes. All we need is enter Sandman, right? 23-14. There's uh, Brent, and they get it to the net and the kill. No, they're going to say it's out. Did it hit the antenna? It was tipped. Oh, oh now they no. switch that. Yep. They reverse the call, and it's match point. Real quick, speaking of baseball, fun fact for you. There's only been nine, uh, nine, uh, nine baseball games this year that have gone three hours, 30 minutes. That's a good tip. I like the new rules. It is match point here, reader serving. Anoka trying to wrap it up here. Andover gets it across. Then it's Schimmick. She sets up Manning. Block. Battle at the net. And it's down. Ivy Manning wins that battle. And winning the match, the Anoka Tornadoes. They win here in the third set, 25-14. And they win the match. They sweep it here three sets to zero. That's a big, that's a big confidence booster. You can see how excited the Tornadoes are to get this one. Uh, it's a big one for them, no question about it. Uh, they wanted to get this one. This was one that they had been circling, as I said, all year long. And lots of smiles on that Tornado team. This was uh, a, probably a huge emotional lift, a big confidence booster. And it's something I think now that they can set their sights moving forward the rest of the season. Gets them to 11-1. and one. Yeah, and as we mentioned, Anoka had not defeated Andover since 2018. That was a 3-2 victory. But then Andover turned around in that section and ended up winning in the section playoffs three sets to one. 
And uh, is that a traveling trophy? It is their that traveling they little a, their little yeah. a board trophy right there. That's the, uh, the kind of the battle of a town, and it's nice. one we haven't had in a long no. time. So it's a big one for the uh, the Anoka girls to get this one back and a big trophy win. Anytime they can put a trophy back in the trophy case, Indeed. they're all about it over here at Anoka. And we mentioned Anoka now ending a five-match losing streak to Andover. They win it here 3-0, 25-18, 25-18, 25-14. Anoka 11-1. They're 3-1 in conference play. They will next host Blaine on Thursday. Tim and I will be back here for that on QCTV. Andover, the Huskies fall to 6-11. Eleven, two and two, and next up on their schedule, they go to Centennial. Any final thoughts, Tim? Well, I think again, you got to continue to watch this Anoka team as we go forward. They may not quite be on that Champlin Park level yet, but at eleven and one, they're going to be a really tough out when we get closer to sections. And the more they continue to play these three set matches and not drop sets, you're going to see their confidence rise. The one thing I want to see is what happens when they do face adversity and they drop that next set. How do they recover? If, if, if they don't ever have to deal with that, great. But I do feel like adversity will come again, and I want to see how this team handles that. This will certainly help their chances in their case. They already have a big lead in the QRF over Centennial and Forest Lake, but beating a section team here will help them in getting that number one seed in uh, Section 7. Well, for everybody here, for our great QCTV crew, everybody back in the studios, our camera people here at the Anoka Fieldhouse, congratulations to the Anoka Tornadoes getting the win tonight over Andover, three sets to zero. For Tim Anderson, I'm Jim Erickson, and you've been watching High School Volley on QCTV Sports.